I'm so excited you guys are here tonight. Thank you guys for coming, for making time on a Monday night. You know, God sees this. God sees when you say, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go to church instead. Amen? Amen. 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 And tonight I'm going to encourage you guys. You know, you guys are a part of a generation that has a lot of problems. You guys agree on that? We see a lot of problems in our generation. And I'm sure a lot of you, if it hasn't affected you personally, you have people that are your friends that are dealing with anxiety, that are dealing with depression, eating disorders, that are dealing with suicidal thoughts, all of these things, boy issues, parent troubles. You see people all the time that they're dealing with all of these problems. But I want to tell you today, you're not going to be part of a problem generation, but you're going to change your generation. Amen? Amen. You're going to bring change that your generation needs. Do you know that your generation needs you? Why do they need you? They need what's inside of you. They need what's inside of you because you've been saved and set free by Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? And if you're in this room tonight and you say, I haven't had that happen to me before. I haven't received Jesus. You have an opportunity to do that at the end of the night. But I want to encourage you tonight with some things that are going to help you to be a great woman of God in your generation. Amen? Amen. I will not. I refuse to raise up women of God that look like the rest of the world. We're not supposed to look like the rest of the world. We're supposed to look different. You shouldn't look like your friends at school that are dealing with all those things that I said. You should look different. Why? Because you have Jesus on the inside of you. A pastor that I really respect, Pastor Carolyn Shuttlesworth, she said, she always says that if you have Jesus inside of you, you people should want to know you're Jesus. They should see your life and say, why is she different? I want to know what's different about her. I want to know her Jesus. And people should see you and say, something's different with her. I want to get what's inside of her. And so I'm going to raise up by the power of God, women that are going to change their generation that say, I won't sit down and do nothing about it, but I'm going to be a woman of God. I'm going to be a woman of the word of God. Amen. 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 We're going to be a different generation. We're not just going to blend in with everybody else. I won't, I will not stand here and watch you be a chameleon. You're not going to blend in with everybody who's in your school. But you are going to say, you know what, I'm standing up. I'm going to be different. Not just to make a scene, not just to cause some noise, but because I can be, because the word of God tells me how I can live different. This word is going to help you to live your best life possible. If you don't have a Bible, come see me after and I'll get one for you. You need this. You need this. Say, I need this. I need this. You need it to help you live the best life possible. Why? It's God's words to us. He literally breathed these words. The Bible says that the word of God is, it was literally breathed by God. So we need these words and they're going to help us to live like great women of God that the Bible says that we can live. Amen? Yes. Amen. All right. I want you to open up your Bibles to Romans 12 too. If you want to put a title for this message... The sermon, I guess you can put um, a generation of women of God. Because that's, that's really what I felt tonight when I was preparing is I didn't want to just put together a, a, some cute little message. But what I really felt is I need to get into you what I feel I want to see in this generation. What we want to see by the word of God in this generation. Because the Bible helps us to be different. And so... There's a lot of people in this world that need this truth. And so by you living your life by the Bible, by living as a woman of God, you are going to bring the gospel to a generation. Amen? Amen. Amen. You're going to look different. Let's go to Romans 12 too. <clears throat> we don't have a screen tonight. So, I'm sorry about that. All right. Romans 12, 2. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person. Say, new person. New person. By changing the way that you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Let's look at the beginning of the verse. It says, don't copy the behavior. Another version says, do not be conformed. Do not be conformed. The first point I have for you tonight is a woman of God 
refuses to conform. Refuses to conform. This scripture is saying, don't copy the behavior of this world. That's the things I was just talking about, the ways that the world is going. This scripture right here is specifically talking about sin, saying don't copy what everybody else is doing. Don't follow the, when they choose to make that, those choices that you know that the Bible says is wrong, when the, they're choosing to cheat, when they're choosing to lie, when they're choosing to pick up that drug, when they're choosing to go out with that guy and stay at his house. When they're doing all of that, what are you doing? I, what I am doing is I'm refusing to conform to the pattern of the world. I'm refusing to conform to what's around me, but I'm going to be different. I'm going to be different and go after the word of God, go after what God has for me. I won't be, say this, say, I won't be, I won't be a woman of this world. A woman of this world. Amen. Amen. And maybe you're sitting in your seat and you're like, I'm literally 11 or 12. You're calling me a woman? Like, yes, because that's what we're raising. We're raising up because someday you're going to leave. They're going to leave this youth group and you're going to go into the world. And what happened here is going to be what creates who you are. The, what you're receiving from God's word now is going to dictate where you go in the future. So we're raising up. You can say that. I will be a woman of God. I won't conform to the ways of this world. But I will, what does the Bible say? Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen? Amen. 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 You won't turn into what the world says you have to be. Um, you know, there's in this generation, and who has like Instagram, TikTok? Maybe some of you aren't allowed. God bless your mothers. Um, they're, good. they're good for that. But you guys see like, and I've noticed this a lot, on like Instagram and TikTok, you see like almost just like this expectation for what you're supposed to be, right? How you're supposed to be, you know, really sad all the time and listen to that like sad boy playlist or whatever. You know, you're supposed to always be going from guy to guy. You're supposed to be dealing with anxiety. You're supposed to be dealing with, with eating disorders. You guys see what I'm talking about? You, like, they're labeling a generation of saying, this is what girls of this generation are. There's, there's no, it's nobody in particular is saying it, but it's an overall overarching labeling that's being put on you of what your generation's supposed to be, of what the world's saying, yeah, this is what Gen Z is. Is anyone here Gen, what is it, Alpha? Is that the next one? Anyone? Yeah? Is it Alpha? I don't know. Okay. So some, okay, Gen Z, Gen Alpha. There's like these, this overall, like this, almost like this uh, system that's trying to get you to be a certain way, to be like, what am I saying? Like this world. And what I'm here to tell you tonight is you don't have to be like that. Say, I don't have to be like that. I, don't have, to be like that. I have a choice. You all, if you have met with me or talked to me for any period of time, that's something that I always say, is that you always have a choice. You always have a choice. You have a choice what happens in your life. Amen? Amen. Nobody's making you make any choices but you. You have a will. That means that you, you get to say, I'm going to stand up or I'm going to sit down. I'm going to get up for school today or I'm going to go back to sleep. You still have a choice. Amen? You know, your parents are making you, you know, making you, but you still have to pull, pick yourself up out of bed, right? So you have a choice as to what you're going to be in this world. And I'm here to tell you today, you're not going to be like what Instagram, what TikTok, all of these people are trying to promote for you to be. But you're going to be what the Bible says. Amen? Amen. There's a couple of things that I wanted to just look at really quickly. So one thing that I feel like the world is saying is that your generation, that you should lack confidence, right? Oh, like she just has to wear her hair up and wear makeup all the time because she's just so insecure. You guys know what I'm saying? Like people, like that's like put on you. The Bible says in Psalm 139 verse 14, you don't have to turn there. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. So when you hear these lies of you will be insecure, you won't have confidence, that's what the Bible is talking about when it's being saying, be transformed by the renewing of our mind. What are we renewing our mind with? The word of God. That's why we have scriptures that we replace lies with. When those lies come, when it's, oh, you're, you're not confident, you have no self-esteem, you say, no, I know who I am. I have been made by the God in heaven. He's my creator. So you see what I'm saying? When you hear that lie, you replace it with the truth. Amen? So if you're taking notes, if you put them like maybe like next to each other, one side, put like lacking confidence or lacking self-esteem. The other side, I want you to put the scripture. Um, 
Also, if there's anybody who wants a notebook, I actually brought some. So if anybody, if you raise your hand, Miss Anna will give you a notebook if anybody wants one. I have like nine, I think. Um, OK, the second one. So the first one, I'm going to say it again. The first one, the lie is you will lack confidence. But the truth is Psalm 139, verse 14. All right, the second lie is you will suffer sickness. How many people know so many people that are sick? You know so many people that are sick. Or w girls that are just like, if we're being real, like girls that are like, yeah, I just have so many problems with my period. I just, oh, I'm just always in pain. Oh, my back, this, my head, that. You guys know people like that. Yes, I know people like that, okay? But that's, that's what I'm here to tell you today is that you're not going to be like what the world is saying, that you are going to be sick. You have to be sick. Because why? The Bible says that by his stripes... You are healed. That's in Isaiah 53, verse 5. So if you're taking notes, the lie is you will be sick or I will be sick. But the truth is Isaiah 53, verse 5, that by his stripes, that when Jesus died, he took stripes on his back. He had flesh ripped off of him, bleeding so that I could be healed, so that I could live a healthy life. So then I didn't have to deal with all the things the world says I'm going to have. I'm going to be sick with the flu this year. I'm going to have all these headaches. I'm, I'm going to have allergies. Even those things seem like, oh, that's such a small thing, a headache. You don't have to deal with that. Amen? Amen. Jesus died so you could live a healthy life. Amen? Healthy in your body. All right, the third lie. You will be a gossip. How many know that this is not something the Bible tells us? The Bible tells us that we are to have clean lips that we should be glorifying God with our lips, not talking bad about our friends, or I guess not just our friends, but other people. Gossip is not something that should be exiting our lips, but there's a generation that's trying to get into you that trying to make you gossip. How many of you guys seen um, Dance Moms? Let's be real in here. Let's be real, okay? Dance Moms. Dance Moms, how many of you guys see all the drama with those moms? Oh, so and so's talking to so and so. Oh, I can't believe their kid. They're just dancing. Blah, 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 blah. Rant, rant, rant. Okay? That is what, you see how it goes from generation to generation? That those dance moms, you guys watch that. And so now you think, people think that's okay. So now they do it in their generation. And so it will just keep continuing. But we're putting a stop. Say, I'm putting a stop. stop. Your generation tells you you'll be a gossip, but the Bible says, that you can keep your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies. That's Psalm 34, verse 13. So the lie is you'll be a gossip. The truth is, is that you can keep your lips from evil, or I'm sorry, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies. What was the verse? Psalm 34, 13. All right. Lie number, what are we on? Four? Are we on four? Somebody help me. Okay. The line number four, you will be weak. The truth is, is that you're clothed with strength. Proverbs 31, 25, a very popular verse. She's clothed with strength and dignity. But that's something that you wear on you, that you're clothed with strength. You're not going to walk around being weak and just, oh, I'm defeated. I, I, oh, I'm just down. No, I don't have to be. I'm clothed with a strength. When I feel like I can't do something, I know I can do all things through Christ who what? Gives me strength. He puts strength in me. I have strength. Amen? I'm not, gonna, I'm not weak. I have strength on the inside. All right. And the fifth lie is you will be perverted. You know, this, there is so much sin in the world. But as Christians, as women of God, we don't become part of sin. We don't join ourselves with sin, but we live a life that is right before God. We've decided to turn our back on sin. When you gave your life to Jesus, you gave up your old way, way of living, and now you have a new life with God. And so as we're having a new life with God, we don't live those same ways that everybody else is living. Having those hor like those perverse thoughts, watching those shows we shouldn't be watching, watching the, listening to that music, filling all of our head with all those things. And having that mind that's all confused and thinking of things the way it shouldn't be. But instead, we're going to live right before God. The Bible says in um, Philippians 4.8 that instead of being perverted, that we can think of things that are pure. 
You know, there's a lot of even books out there, and you guys probably know what I'm talking about, that are very, very inappropriate. As you're reading it, it's like, oh my gosh, somebody put, wrote down these words? There's even books out there. It's not just movies, it's not just shows, even those things. And so instead of filling our mind with those things, we're going to do what this scripture says. To think upon things that are true, that are noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. And so you're, you're going to be different than your generation, and you're going to have a mind that is pure, that thinks upon things that are godly, things that are right. Amen? Amen. 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 So what's the first point? I refuse to conform. I refuse. I'm taking a stand, and I'm saying no. I'm saying I won't be like all of these lies that the world's trying to tell me that I need to be. I will not be like that. You have to take a stand. Maybe even you're in here today and you're like, my family doesn't serve God. You know, they don't even, they're not encouraging me to live a godly life. You can still take a stand and say, I refuse to conform to the way that this world is going. But I'm going to be transformed by the word of God, by these scriptures that tell me I can live differently. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm encouraged tonight. All the things that the world says you're supposed to be, there's a different way in God. So all those lies we just listed that the world is telling you you're going to be sick, you're going to be sinful, you're going to deal with all of these things, there's a better way in God that you can say, I don't want that, I want what the Bible says. There's always a different reality in God from what the world says. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Second point tonight. Oh, I will be a woman of God who does what the Word says. Open your Bibles to Psalm 119. Verse 105. Somebody could bring me my water. That would be great. Psalm 119. I don't know. Uh, oh, my purse is on the floor right there. Psalm 119. Verse 105. Everybody there? No? Maybe? All right. Psalm 119. Thank you so much. Psalm 119, verses, verse 105. It says, Your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light to my path. Your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light to my path. You know when you wake up in the night, or this doesn't really happen to me in the night, but like, okay, I'll say it like this. In a place you don't know, you're like in a weird hotel, or like you're on like vacation with your family, or in like a weird Airbnb, and you're like, where am I? You pull out your flashlight so you can see the way to get to the bathroom, right? Okay, you guys, we've all been there. We need our flashlight to see. We need, you need light when it's dark out. You need light to see, amen? Okay. You're out walking your dog, whatever. If you don't have a light to see, you're going to have a problem. You're going to get hurt. You're going to run into something. I was on vacation. I don't know how old I was. Maybe like 12. No, no, older, older. 16, 16. We're at this Airbnb, and my sister will remember this, where it's like the middle of the night. My cousin was crying. I think she was like 8 or 9. And my aunt got up to help her, and she didn't know where she was. She didn't have a light. So when she stood up, she hit her head on this shelf, and, like, we woke up. We heard it, and we woke up. Why did she hit her head? Because she didn't have a light. She couldn't see. And so when you don't have God's word, and you can't, you can't see where you're going, you're not going to know what turns to take. You're going to be blind. You're going to have, you're gonna be blind. You're not going to know where to go. You're going to be trying to figure it out all by yourself, and then you're going to trip over this chair, and I'm going to have to take you to the hospital. And then we're going to have a bigger problem on our hands. When you have the Word of God, you don't have to make all of these missteps. You have the Word of God to be a light, to show you where to go, so that your life doesn't have to be a mess. You know, you guys probably know people, even adults in your life, that you see them and they make very poor decisions. They make bad choices, and it gets them to places that they never would have been if they made a different choice. You guys know what I'm saying? 
And so when we have the word of God, it helps us to know which way to go, where to turn, what to do. It's a lamp to our feet. It's a light to our path showing us where to go. And so we need the, wor the word of God. We need to do what the word of God says. We're going to be, and I encourage you to be somebody that takes the word of God seriously. The Bible says that the word of God, it's alive and active. It's sharper than a double-edged sword, cutting to the soul and spirit, dividing between joint and marrow. That means even right now, as I'm speaking to you the word of God, that it's going into your heart and doing something in it. It's doing, making a change that I could never do with my own words. It's making a change that nobody could ever do with their own words. Why? Because it's the word of God and it has power behind it. It's not just regular words that somebody decided to write one day because they felt like, they felt like it. It's not like I just decided to write a poem one day or just write a book, okay? It's words that were literally inspired by God so that when they're spoken, it's going into your heart and it's doing something about it. That when you're reading it, you're, it's coming in and it's changing something in you. So you need the word of God in your life. It's powerful. The, words, the word will work for you as long as you are getting it inside of you. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing what? And hearing what? Those of you who know it, the word of God. The faith comes by hearing and hearing. Amen. So as you're hearing the word of God tonight, what's happening? Faith is being built up in you. You need the word of God. Amen. But we're going to be women that do what the Bible says. That when we look at this, we say, it's a lamp to my feet and it's a light to my path. That means I'm not taking another step unless I have the word of God telling me what to do. That means that it's as I'm walking, it's showing me where to go. That I don't have, I'm not a blind person, but I can see what to do because I have the word of God. Amen. Amen. And we're going to do what it says. The Bible is your guide for life. You know, you don't have to do what everybody else is doing. You don't have to do what everybody else is doing. It's not that we're just not going to be like them, but we don't have to do what they're doing. We're going to do what the Word of God says. We're not going to be like all of the other girls that are trying to make their way in life by, you know, attracting people, by, you know, entering themselves into relationships they never should have gotten themselves into. But we're going to be people who do what the Word of God says that say, I'm not making a step without the word of God, without reading this word and letting it work inside of me. I'm going to be somebody who does what the, word does, what the word says, not what people do. Amen? Let's go to Proverbs chapter 20, uh, sorry, chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. Verse number 20. It says, My child, pay attention to what I say. Listen carefully to my words and don't lose sight of them. Let them penetrate deep into your heart, for they bring life, say life, life. to those who find them and healing to their whole body. The word of God brings life to you. And as you're reading it, life is coming inside. You're literally... You're, this is not something that's just of this world. I want to get you to understand this tonight, that these are not just words, but that as I read it, something happens inside of me. Something, there's a change going on on in the inside that I could never just, I couldn't make this. I couldn't make this happen. Some of you are maybe even feeling that right now, that as I'm hearing the word of God, I don't know, I feel something. I feel something different. Why? Because these are words that are from God. They're directly from God. And so what is this saying here? That there's life in the word of God. There's literal life in it. And he's saying, pay attention. Listen carefully to my words. He's saying, listen carefully to this. Pay attention. Take care as you read the word of God, as you hear the word of God. I'm going to pay attention to this and make sure that I'm listening. I'm going to make sure that as I read it, it's not just like another book that I'm not paying attention to, but as I read it, I'm making sure that I'm I, oh, it says I should do that? Okay. Well, this happened, you know, in this person's life in the Bible. Well, if I do that, it will happen for me. As you're reading it, you're paying attention to what it says. And what's happening as you're reading it? You're getting life. You're getting life. And so 
You're, there's so many benefits to God's word. You're getting a way to go. It's showing you where to go, what path to take. You're getting life. You're getting instruction. It is encouraging you. You're getting faith on the inside. So there's those three things that as I'm reading it, I know which way to go. So you can write this down. When I have the word of God, I know which way to go. I get life. And I get faith. The Bible, as you read it, it does something for you. And so we're going to be women that don't just keep the Bible on the shelf and let the dust collect. Just letting it sit there, maybe in next week, you know, maybe the next week, and it just becomes like this thing that you just keep putting off. It's like that like one closet or that one drawer that it just keeps being needing to be cleaned, and you just keep putting it off, and I'll just do it eventually, and I'll just do it eventually, and then it never really happens. You just keep putting it off. But it's not going to be like that. Because why? We know that we need the word of God. I need this. I need this today. I need this tomorrow. I need this on Thanksgiving. I need this on Christmas. I need this on my birthday. It's not an excuse. Oh, it's a holiday. I, yeah, it's fine. I don't need God today. No, you need God every day. You need God every day. Every day you need to be saying, I can't do this by myself, but I need God's help today. I want to live for him. And how can I know how to live for God? By reading his word. Amen? Amen? Amen. Like I said in the beginning, if you don't have a Bible, come see me. I'll get you one. Proverbs 31, verse 30. If you've been to a women's anything, you've probably heard this scripture. But there's a part that I want to point out to you. Proverbs 31, verse number 30. My grandma always used to say she loved hearing the Bible pages turn, and it's just making me think of her. All right. Um, verse number 30. Charm is deceptive, and beauty doesn't last, but a woman who fears the Lord will be greatly praised. What I want to point out to you, and maybe you should underline this in your Bible, it says a woman who fears the Lord. A woman who fears the Lord who takes God seriously, who, set, who knows God's not messing around. This is not, life is not a joke that, well, someday in the future I'll just, I'll figure it out when I get older. This isn't, there's, this, there's no time for games. But I, I'm taking God seriously. A woman who fears the Lord. We're going to be women who take God seriously at his word, at what he says. Amen? A woman who fears the Lord. Who fears the Lord. And this is not like a, oh my gosh, I'm so scared. But this is a reverent respect that you say, I know that God is God. It's a healthy fear. Pastor Joey said this before, but like if you know, like you have a healthy fear of your parents, right? Like that you know that if they mean business, they mean business. And they're going to, if you don't do this, then you're going to get this, you know, consequence. And you, okay, okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. It's not like the same way with God, but you have this healthy fear of them. Like, okay, I love my parents, but I know that I have a respect for them. Like, I know they're serious, right? So we need to be women who say, I fear God, not in a way that I'm scared, but I know that God is serious and that if I take his word seriously, it's going to help me. Amen? Amen? Amen. All right, number three. This is the last point that I have. We're going to be women who love the things of God. Go with your Bibles. Go in your Bibles with me to 2 Samuel chapter 6. 2 Samuel chapter 6. All right. Verse number 16. Pastor Joey talked about this in his sermon last week a little bit, this, what's going on in this um, scripture. But there's a man in the Bible named David. Does everybody, you've heard of David? David was, loved, loved the Lord, and he was the king. And the presence of God was coming back to be where David was. And David was so excited that he was dancing. So that's where we pick up. Verse number 16. 
But as the ark of the Lord, that's where the presence of God dwelled. It was different than now. But the, when, as the ark of the Lord entered the city of David, Michael, the daughter of Saul, looked down from her window. When she saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, she was filled with contempt for him. They brought the ark of the Lord and set it in its place inside the special tent David had prepared for it. And David sacrificed burnt offerings and peace offerings to the Lord. When he had finished his sacrifice, David blessed the people in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies. Then he gave to every Israelite man and woman in the crowd. I'm sorry. A loaf of bread, a cake of dates, and a cake. Okay, skip, skip, skip. Skip down to, uh, I guess it's 23. When David returned home to his own family, Michael, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet him. She said in disgust, how distinguished the king of Israel looked today, shamelessly exposing himself to the servant girls. All right, so we'll stop there. So what does it say? Let's back it up to the beginning of verse 23. It says that then she said in disgust. She was disgusted with his behavior. She was like, Pastor Joey did like a voice last week. I'm not going to try to do it because like I just not. But he, but she said like this in like a disgusting, like how could like, how could you be doing that? She was disgusted that her own husband was excited to be in the presence of God. She was disgusted that he loved God. She was like, how could you look like that in front of them? And what I want to get in you tonight is that we want to be people and women of God who love the things of God. She clearly didn't have a love for the things of God inside of her. Because why? She was like disgusted by it. If she loved the things of God, she, wouldn't have, she would have just gone right out there dancing with him, right? She wouldn't have been mocking him. That's what she's doing in this, in this text. She said, in disgust, how distinguished the king of Israel looked today, shamelessly exposing himself to the servant girls like any vulgar person might do. She was embarrassed that he wasn't wearing his kingly garments. But ultimately, she shouldn't have been worried about that at all. Why? Because the ark of God, the presence of God had come back to the city. David was just so excited that I'm gonna, we have the presence of God back here. And so he was so excited about it, and she's like in disgust, saying, you know, making fun of him. And what I want to raise up is women who are opposite of Michael, who say, I love the things of God. I don't mock the things of God, but I love the things of God. You know, a lot of people would say, like, Christian men are, like, like weak. I haven't even heard that before. Like, oh, they're just weak men. Like, people like, you know, oh, he's a Christian. Uh, oh, he's a Christian. No. You should be looking for a man of God, amen? amen? You should be looking for somebody like David that's not just sitting in the corner like this. What's the next one? You guys like see that guy in service and he's just like standing there talking to his friends during worship. And then there's another guy over here and he's like worshiping the Lord. What, which side? Which side should we be picking here, ladies? Over here. We should be looking for men who are say, I'm not ashamed, but I love God with everything in me. And I'm going to make sure that everybody knows it. Amen? That's what David was doing. He's like, I don't care. I don't care who sees me. I love God. I want everybody to know. And I want to raise up women who say, I'm not looking for the man who just looks cool, who has the cool clothes, you know, that's just hiding, sitting here with his cool friends. Sorry, Anna. You're my cool friend. His cool friends, just not caring about the service. No. You should be looking for a man of God who says, I'm here to hear the word of God and to receive a change. Amen? Amen. Amen. They, you should be looking for somebody who's taking God seriously, who's not making fun of the things of God. If you're with somebody that makes fun of the things of God, bye. <laughs> Goodbye. You are not going to be like Michael. Amen? Amen. I'm not going to be like Michael who mocks the things of God and say, how could you be dancing before God? Do you know, like, that's ridiculous. No, we're not going to be like that. We're going to be women who say, when we see that somebody is excited to worship God, we're not going to make fun of it. We're going to be somebody who says, yes, I'm going to join them. Amen? Amen. We're going to join them. We're going to say, what did God do? Oh, he did that? Let's dance. I remember a couple years ago, our first year at Heat Wave, somebody, they received, they were colorblind. 
And when they were prayed for, they got, their, they got all vision. They could see every color perfectly. And I, let me tell you, at least from what I could see, every person in that room was like jumping like a crazy person. We weren't caring about what this person thought or what that person thought, but we said, it was just like, oh my goodness, God just did a great miracle. We're going to praise him for it. We weren't looking around saying, oh, who's going to see me? We're not, I'm not raising up women who are going to be ashamed, but we're going to be women who say, I'm stepping out. I'm making sure people hear and know that I love Jesus and then I'm standing for him. Amen? Amen. 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 We're not going to be cowardly. Like that scripture, like I was saying before, we're not going to be weak, but we have a strength on the inside that we're going to say, I'm going to stand up for righteousness. I'm not going to laugh at the people who are doing the right thing, but I'm going to stand with them. I'm going to stand up when people are worshiping God. I'm going to worship with them. I'm not going to make fun of it. And if you're somebody that says, oh, I've made fun of that before, you, there's, there's forgiveness. God can forgive you. This isn't a, well, if, you know, I've done this one time. I can't move on. But let this, as you're hearing this today, receive a change and say, I want to be different. And I'm going to leave different. Amen? Amen? Let's go to Matthew chapter 5, verse number 6. Matthew chapter 5, verse number 6. It says, God blesses those who hunger and thirst for justice. Another version say for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Another version says, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness shall be filled. And you should make that something that you pray and that you desire in your heart. That's, you say, I want to be somebody who desires and thirsts after righteousness. And you know that that will be met, that God will meet you. Last week we sang a song at the end of service, singing, I hunger and thirst for you. Who remembers that? We sang that song that says, I hunger and thirst for you. That as you hunger and thirst for God, God comes to meet you. And he says, I, I hear that somebody is hungry and thirsty for me. I'm going to go and I'm going to meet that. I'm going to satisfy them. And so where I want you to be, and the Bible wants you, God wants you to be, women who say, I hunger and thirst for righteousness. I hunger and thirst for God. You know, there's so many things in this world you could try to let satisfy you that you could run after. You could run after a career, you know, in acting and singing and, you know, making all types of money. But when you get to the end, just like Evangelist Lindsay was saying earlier, when you get to the end, you are going to be left unsatisfied. Unsatisfied. Nothing about that is going to satisfy you. What your spirit. It's not going to satisfy you for eternity. But God is the only thing that can satisfy you. He's the only one that can go inside, like I was saying, and, and make a change in your heart. He's the only one that can satisfy you. So as you hunger and thirst for him, the Bible says that he comes to meet that. That you will be satisfied. And so I want to encourage you tonight to be women of God that say, I'm going to hunger and thirst for God and nothing else. I'm not going to look for something else to satisfy me. I'm not going to look for other people's, you know, nice compliments and words they say about me. I'm not going to look, okay, if I do this, you know, then I'll feel better about myself. I'm not going to look to anything else. I'm not going to look to those, you know, somebody offered me a vape the other day. Maybe I'll try that. I'm not going to look to those things because I know that at the end of the day, that won't satisfy me. But what will satisfy me is God. When I hunger and thirst for him, he will satisfy me. Amen? Amen. And so we're raising up at Impact Youth. We are raising up women who love the things of God, who say, I want to stay. I want to stay in the service. I don't want to leave. I want to stay in the presence of God. How many of you remember a couple weeks ago at Fall Revival that Evangelist Wesley said, or Pastor Joey said, you guys can worship for a couple more minutes. And people stayed at the altar. And they just stayed. They just wanted to be in the presence of God. And that's what we're raising up here. People who say, I just want God. I want everything that he has. I don't care who sees it. I don't care who sees me going after God because it's public. It's for everybody to know because everybody needs to know what I have is working. And it's not just, you know, a phase. It's not a phase, mom. It's 
not a phase, okay? It's not a phase. This isn't just, oh, I'm going to go to church for a little while and it will just help me for a little bit. I, I don't want to see you in 10 years. And you say, yeah, I used to go to Impact. It was just like a phase, though. Like that church, that church thing was like just a phase for me. This isn't a phase. This is something that if you can make this your life, your life will be greater for it. When you lose your life, In God, when you say, I'm putting all that aside, you actually gain a better life. You gain a better life. This is worth it. It's worth losing a couple of friends over. It's worth turning away from that sin. It's worth it. Why? Because there's life in God. There's life in his word. The Bible says that the thief, the enemy, the devil, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy from your life. Anything in your life that's causing something like that is from the devil. But what does the Bible say? That Jesus came to give you life and life more abundantly. There's a life in God you will not find anywhere else in this world. And I don't want to see, and I won't see, I won't see, I refuse to see you in 10 years and you say, yeah, I was just a phase and it'll have you run away from me in the mall. You know, like that person you see, and you're like, oh, dang it. I got to get away from them. You're like, oh, my gosh, I didn't think I'd see them here today. I don't want that to be you. And it's not just about me. I'm just saying because I'm the one standing up here. But I don't want you to be someone, oh, church, no thanks. Oh, the Bible, yeah, I'm just going to close that. I don't want that to be you. Say, that won't be me. Won't be it won't be you because you're going to make a choice. And you, that, it comes down to you. What choice are you going to make? Are you going to choose to say, I'm going to be just, I'm going to go with the flow. I'm going to get in the river that the world has, and I'm just going to go and see where it takes me. If I hit a couple rocks along the way, whatever, I'm just going to go wherever it goes. Or am I going to make a choice and say, I'm going a different way, and I'm taking the word of God with me because it will be my light for life. I'm going to, I'm refused to conform to this world, but I'm going to be transformed by the renewing of my mind by God's word. These are the choices that you have to make. And this is, this is serious. This is a choice you can make tonight that's saying, listen, I'm done. I'm done playing games. I had to make that choice in my life. When I was 15 years old and I felt like my world was falling apart, I had to move. I was losing all my friends. I was like a wreck. Okay. I was a wreck. And I had to make a decision in that moment. I was like, all right, like, I'm just making, I'm going to, God, I'm, I'm all in. I'm all in. That summer, every, like I, all of it, I just, everything changed. I said, I'm all in. I've never been the same because when you serve God, it's not just, it's not just like a, another person, but he's God. He can do great things in your life. There's a word of God that will work for you, that you'll say, my life has never been better. I can honestly say that, truthfully. I, my, like, my life just keeps getting better. The Bible says that the path of the righteous, it gets brighter and brighter day by day. And that can be you, that you say, you know, oh, it wasn't, when I was a kid, everything was just better. There was just no stress. There was no problems. I didn't know all the things of, that were going on, whatever. You don't have to be that person that says, oh, everything was just better when I just didn't know, you know, whatever. The Bible says the path of the righteous gets brighter and brighter. So that's going to be my reality. Amen? Amen? You know that what the Bible says, you have to take that to the bank. Say, this is fact. This is going to be fact for my life. No one can take this from me because why? It's the word of God that he gave to me. It's God breathed. It's right from God. And so I'm taking this and I'm saying, Oh, you guys think I'm going to be sick? Oh, well, the Bible says that by his stripes I'm healed. You have to have that in you. That you, like, you're not letting the lies get in here and get in here. You're not letting it live in your mind. You're not letting it live in your heart. You're not letting that happen. You're making a choice to say, I'm living by the word of God. I'm living in the way that I, I know is the greatest way because it's the way that God has. God's way is the best way. Amen? Amen. It's the best way. And I'm only 24, but there's people in this room that are, that are older than me, even the same age as me. And I can tell you that if you ask them, they'll tell you this is the best their life has ever been. Why? Because life is just great with God, that it keeps getting better. This, it's, right now is great, but tomorrow is going to be even better. And the next day is going to be even better. Pastor Joey says this. This is the smallest impact youth is ever going to be. Why? 
because the things with God, they grow. Things, they're not, we're not meant to stay small. We're meant to grow. So the things of God are, it's not like this world, but it's different. We're not like this world. We're different. Amen? Yes. Amen. And so this is, this is what I felt to give you tonight. This wasn't just a, almost like a charge of like, I'm making a choice of this is who I'm going to be. We are not going to be. You're not going to blend in anymore. You're not going to blend in. You're not going to blend in with those people around you. You just sink back. That was me, my freshman year of high school. I just blended in with everyone around me. Didn't want anybody to know I was a Christian. I just was like, oh, yeah, I'll just do what you guys are doing. Just blended right in. You know what resulted from that? Nothing good. Nothing. The friendships that I made, bad. Had a bad relationship with a boyfriend. Bad. Walked away from God. All of it. Just bad. And all of those choices I made in that time of my life were not good because I was saying, I was saying no to God and I was trying to just blend in with everybody else. But when I chose God, do you know how many times I've looked at my life and said I'm so happy that I chose to go the way of God, to go the way that God had for me? Because God's way is always better, amen? Amen. 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 And so I'm, we're raising at Impact Youth, diff, women who are different than the ways of this world. Doing the things that the Bible says is going to set you up to be the greatest at whatever God has for you to do in your life. Whatever God, maybe you feel, you know, oh, I don't know what I want to do with my life. That's okay. God will help and show you. But maybe you do know. Doing the things the way of God is going to help it to you to be the greatest you can be at it. Why? Because he's going to help you. As you're walking as a woman of God, you have a guide for life. You have God to help you with all of these things. And so your life is going to be great just because you serve the Lord. But in your purpose, in what God has said, I've put you on the earth to do this. We all have something that we're here on the earth to do. As we follow these things, as we use the word of God, as we refuse to conform to the ways of this world, we're going to see that we're going to be able to succeed in anything we do. Why? The Bible says in Psalm 1 that anything the righteous touch will prosper. It will prosper. And so that's going to be you. Say, that's going to be me. And I'm having you repeat these things tonight because I beg of you to make a choice tonight that says I'm done blending in. I'm done just being like everybody else. But I'm making a choice to be a woman of God that says I'm going to live by the word of God and nothing less. I'm going to go the way of God and no other. there's no other options for me because I know that if I go another way, I'm going to trip and fall and I'm going to remember that this was not the way that God had. I'm going to remember that I should have gone another way. And listen, if you decide tonight, listen, the way of God is not for me, and you make another choice, that is your choice. We all have to make a choice. God doesn't force anything upon people, but it's always up to you. You have a will. God gave you a will. He gave you a way, like I was saying in the beginning, you have an option. You can choose what to do. But I ask you and I encourage you tonight, to take this seriously, to say, I'm going to be a, somebody in my generation that makes a change. I'm going to be somebody that doesn't just blend in with my generation and just does what everybody else is doing. And listen, this doesn't even have to just be like sin, but this can be, I'm not just going to, you know, oh, everybody's going to this school, so I'm just going to go to that school too. Everybody's, you know, doing, doing this, you know, they're going to this, you know, event. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be, oh, it's just sin. We're just blending in with sin. It's not just that. It's that when God speaks to you to make a decision, to make a choice, what, what are you going to do? I'm going to go the way of God. I'm going to go the way that God is, is showing me to go. I'm going to go to that school he asked me to go to, even though it's really far from home. And, you know, my parents really, they don't really like me going. I have to go. I'm responsible to God for my life at the end of the day. At the end of the day, and I'm not telling you to disrespect your parents by any means, but what I am saying is that when you stand before God one day, you're going to be responsible for yourself and be able to say, God, I, I, every, every choice that you made, that you're responsible for your own actions. And so tonight, I encourage you to make a choice in your own heart to say, I'm choosing the way of God. I'm choosing to be a woman of God in my generation that stands up, that doesn't sit down, that doesn't blend in, but that I want to make a change for God. Amen? Amen. Would you stand to your feet?